SpaceX is a big name in space. And SpaceX's Starship is one of its most important vehicles. The Starship logo reads, Earth Orbit, Moon, Mars, and Beyond. SpaceX has won lucrative contracts with NASA, playing a crucial role in the Artemis lunar landing program with its Starship vehicle. On top of that, SpaceX currently has three private human spaceflight missions on its Starship manifest. Those include Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa's Dear Moon flight around the moon, the third mission in billionaire Jared Isaacman's Polaris program, and a separate lunar mission later this decade, for which entrepreneur Dennis Tito and his wife Akiko purchased two seats. All these big plans are on the way, and SpaceX is working tirelessly day and night on its most powerful vehicle. This huge Starship rocket was tested recently but it blasted off on an unpiloted maiden flight. It successfully flew for more than two minutes before tumbling out of control and exploding in a cloud of flaming debris. Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly, or a RUD, during ascent, said SpaceX engineer John Insprucker, serving as a launch commentator on the company's webcast. On April 20th, SpaceX launched its first fully integrated Starship launch vehicle and failed. Does this mean it was a big failure for SpaceX? If we understand the details of this test flight, SpaceX is claiming the opposite. According to them, orbital testing exceeded expectations. The vehicle cleared max Q, the point at which the most aerodynamic pressure is exerted on the vehicle. Despite losing eight of its 33 rocket engines, the vehicle flew for nearly three minutes. The upper stage failed to separate from the booster at almost 40 kilometers, causing uncontrolled tumbling and a spectacular midair explosion. The test yielded valuable data for future Starship and Super Heavy prototypes, despite its fiery end. Despite the winds, the test showed that Starship mission timelines need resetting, tempering expectations. The Starship's attempt at an orbital launch showed impressive progress, but also that the company still has a long way to go before achieving its Super Heavy launch ambitions. Beyond the technical issues with the rocket itself, the sheer power of the Raptor engines at takeoff produced a massive crater underneath the orbital launch mount. It's unclear how much work will be required to repair the site or if it can be salvaged at all. Either way, ground infrastructure issues could impose significant delays to later tests, perhaps delaying the next one by months. Dear Moon has a launch date, later this year. This was optimistic to begin with when they announced it in 2021, but now it seems downright ludicrous. SpaceX contract for Artemis 3 with NASA is also questionable now. Artemis 3 will see astronauts launch to space inside an Orion atop a space launch system vehicle, after which they will rendezvous with a Starship human landing system. From there they will travel to the lunar surface and back, but whether that can be achieved as planned in 2025 is doubtful. Between now and then, SpaceX must fly at least one uncrewed Starship and land it on the lunar surface before NASA can deem the vehicle ready to carry astronauts. The Artemis 3 plan also involves SpaceX sending up multiple reusable tankers and a propellant storage depot, with Star Starship refueling on orbit to ensure it can make all the orbital burns required for the mission. All of these components of the mission are affected by delays to the core Starship testing program. FC2, please prepare for section 35, OSC, FC1, LVN. T plus 30 seconds, Starship 10 has lift off. It's headed to 10 kilometers on its test flight from Boca Chica in Cameron County, Texas. Needless to say, the plan is enormously complicated. SpaceX will not just need to send Starship to orbit once, but again and again. It will have to prove a high degree of safety before NASA allows astronauts to fly on it. At this pace, it's more realistic to hope for Artemis 3 happening any time before 2030. Does that mean NASA made the wrong choice in selecting SpaceX for its human landing system? Or that Maizawa and Isaac Man bet on the wrong horse? Not at all. But it does mean that all of us should temper our expectations about what the rest of this decade might hold for human spaceflight. What are your opinions?